like most local people and I've driven past these woods for many years without stopping. Uh, you're always on a mission on the highway and it's only fairly recently that I've come up here and discovered these woodlands. Walking along, singing strong, singing loud and clear. Walking along, feeling strong and singing everywhere. Well, I've been um, part of organising woodland walks for, for groups of people and it's, it's mainly to introduce them to the woodlands because so few local people have actually been in here. They're not grand, there's no soaring mountain ash, it's mess mate and uh, what some people would think of as scrub. And uh, when you first arrive, you think there's not much here. And then the birds return, they start calling. Um, you see the flash of a blue wren, uh, you recognise a sundew orchid. Suddenly you, you start to see it all with fresh eyes. It, uh, it seeps into you, these woodlands. The walks have been led by people who know and love them and that's been really important well, to begin to see them through their eyes. Uh, it's great to visit some new places but to visit them with, with people who know them so intimately. Um, we've been with birdos, we've been with orchid lovers, we've been with uh, people who just like walking fast to, through the woodlands. and. It's a different experience with all of them, but um, always people who've been on the walks have been incredibly moved by the experience. Something about walking in the woodlands, it's, it's, um, it's, it's not like anything else, it's getting away from everything else. That's what I really value about this bit of woodland, the fact that it is here, it still exists, you still can get out away from everything else. So when I come into these woodlands, I experience something different every time. I, I'm sometimes joined by somebody who has expertise in some area and I'll be learning about orchids that rely on certain fungi and so on and only open for three hours a day in some instances and so on. And it, just the fact that those things exist and they're so interconnected with everything under my feet. And then another day I'll learn about vines climbing trees and then the birds in the trees um, and the, the way they depend on them and the way everything depends on everything else. Uh, they're things that we were told in biology when I was a kid, but it's only really struck me when I've started to walk in these woodlands. It's a really interesting thing. I've driven past for 50 years, never stopped. And we went into the Adams Reserve and we were walking around and I've got to tell you that um, the woodland is a beautiful place to be. Open spaced, lots of colour still, and I, I think the visual is, is, makes it really accessible for a lot of people because you can see so far with the open space trees. And I really got it, you get a real sense of what it was like for those um, first explorers who came here. You know, just the wonder of something new. I, I really, it was brand new for me. And the really great thing is, it's still got goannas, and it's still got even bandicoots. I mean, when we're doing rehabilitation of waterways, we, we're playing with one arm up our back because we don't have those digging animals. They're all gone. And yet, here it is, lumps of land 
that still have the faunal population, which is, is almost unheard of. Uh, a sense of community builds up over the walks. It's a lovely way to meet new people. Very non-threatening, you're not looking at them, you're not in a pub, you're just sort of walking along companionably, enjoying the forest. And uh, frequently the small groups have kept email um, contact afterwards, swapped photos and after being on the walks. We weren't setting out to brainwash people, uh, we just wanted to show them what was here, but ine inevitably you start talking about the threats to the woodlands and um, being here puts that into context. And uh, by the time people finish the walk, they are politicised. Yes, when I'm walking and I, I realise that this is under threat, Somebody tells me, oh, don't worry about it. There's, there's laws and rules and regulations. We can't do too much harm. I, I just fear for the very existence of these values here. It's, it's too much, too valuable to lose. And in this day and age, surely we realise now, these things are precious and limited and we cannot remove them. We just have to stop doing this. You know, when we're in a, a, a shire with 95% cleared, I mean, that's only five hectares out of a hundred left. And most of that scungy little roadsides and even worse along waterways. And here you have these blocks which retain the functionality. It's a, it's a real no-brainer. Like, if we can't get it together, to look after this pit of land with all of these things intact and we've spent so much and so much money trying to rehabilitate little scungy pale facsimiles of previous stuff along creeks and waterways if we can't keep it where it is i mean what are we doing <laughs>